I'm Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. And I heard just the most amazing news last night. I knew that I had been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards. And last night, I found out that I am indeed a finalist. I, my show, Dare to Dream, is a finalist in the entertainment category, which is interesting. And I accept it. I'm so thrilled. And I'm not going to know till the end of this month how it turns out. I'm super willing to receive this. I've been doing this show over 12 years. I love what I do. I love these conversations. And I'm enthralled that you all join us and that you're so great about posting comments and letting us know how you're receiving the shows or what they're creating for you or causing you to think about or shifting in your life. That's exactly why the show is here. So you can live really bold and free and create the life that you dream of. That's what it's all about. And today is no different. Um, I would ask you too to subscribe to the show. It is here for you. So if you'd like this to come into your inbox, there's a new show generally once a week, occasionally twice a week. And if you subscribe, please leave a review so that people who are looking for this level of number one transformation conversation can find the program as well based on your review. I want to thank Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness for sponsoring the show. You can find out more about the energy healing work they do worldwide at Dr. Dane here, that's H E E R.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. And my question to you is <laughs> Is your money smiling? You might want to open your wallet and check because my guest today is Ken Honda, and he is the author of Happy Money, the Japanese art of making peace with your money. Money and happiness expert Ken Honda is a best-selling self-development author in Japan with book sales surpassing 7 million copies since 2001. Ken studied law in Tokyo and entered the Japanese workforce as a business consultant and investor. Ken's financial expertise comes from owning and managing several businesses, including an accounting company, a management consulting firm, and a venture capital corporation. His writings bridge the topics of finance and self-help, focusing on creating and generating personal wealth and happiness through deeper self-honesty. He's got ongoing support available to those of you listening or reading his book. He's got mentoring programs, business seminars, therapeutic workshops, and correspondent courses. He's actually the first person from Japan to be voted into the Transformational Leadership Council. And those of us living in Los Angeles are very much connected with this inner circle, know about TLC. It is a great honor because these are personal and professional development leaders. He is fluent in Japanese and English, lived in Boston, Massachusetts for two years, and currently resides in Tokyo, Japan. If you'd like to learn more, go to KenHonda.com. Ken, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's an honor, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you, Debbie. This is such a great honor, and what a great way to start my morning. <laughs> yes, I'm late in the afternoon here. You're early in the morning, so I'm very grateful that you took the time to join us today. Thank you. Your book, which I'm reading, beautiful book, Happy Money. Mm -hmm. I think really where I want to start is the fact, reading in your bio alone, happiness and peace. That's very interesting to put those particular two words together. So why happiness and peace? What is it that you know from the work you do that makes both those words so relevant and so important to put together? You know, I was, as a son of a very successful accountant, I grew up with money. At the same time, I've witnessed so many people suffer from money, uh, even though they had a lot. So I realized there are two kinds of people. One is uh, very happy people with money and very happy, peop uh, happy people without money. And I wonder, can I have both? You know? And I realized that in order to have both, you have to know about certain things. For example, 
uh, in order to be happy and wealthy at the same time, you have to follow your heart. You have to do what you love. And, but most of us get stuck in the job that we don't even like. And, and uh, we can't really get out of this low paying, uh, un, uh, underappreciating, uh, underappreciated uh, environment. So uh, there are so many things we have to do, but um, happy money is a uh, um, um, thing that I um, concluded as, as a, a way to, a shortcut to happiness and money. Because uh, there are two kinds of money in the world, happy money and unhappy money. Happy money uh, makes you smile when you receive it and gives you joy when you spend it. Mm-hmm. Whereas unhappy money is everywhere. Um, we receive money with uh, frustration. No, am I getting paid this little? Mm-hmm. And also we get frustrated when we, when we spend it. You know, we don't want to spend money because we feel like part of us, our body gets ripped off. So uh, we live in this frustration around money. So I think we have a choice. Do we want to live in the flow of happy money or live in the flow of unhappy money? And that will be a, a, a totally different life. I would imagine that most people pay their weekly bills with unhappy money. Yes. That there's looking at the pile in front of oneself and thinking, ah, oh, I owe this, I owe this. And I did all this work and look what's left. Yes. So how can people supersede that to have a shift around even paying bills? Mm-hmm. For example, you know, uh, if you have to pay bills, you must have received some kind of service mm-hmm. before. That could be electricity, water, or um, if you went to a restaurant with your friends, you must have, uh, have you must have some kind of fun at the restaurant. So if you can remember all the things you spend all your money on and just start appreciating, oh, that was a fun, so much fun with my best buddies and I went to a, a short trip or uh, this is the airfare and the gas and you try to remember all the fun things and great things that you can appreciate for. So then you don't feel like, ooh, I have to pay the bills. You know, you can just say, Thank you so much. You know, I, I got so much out of this uh, whole thing. And then happily, you can pay for that. Or, oh, I don't want to pay for this. I don't want to pay for this. But you have to pay for it anyway. So if you don't want to <laughs> do it as a, as, a, as a slave, you know, like, I don't want to do that. Or are you willing to give up your money for your happiness? So it's your choice. Yes. When you first made this discovery, oh, there's energy to money. Mm-hmm. So money, depending on where it's coming from within oneself, mm-hmm. has the sense of happiness. Other money has this heaviness, this unhappiness. Mm. And that creates something, depending on where it comes from within us, happier, or unhappier. So when you're making this discovery, did you start to use this in your own life? And did you find mm-hmm. a pocket in your life where it really previously wasn't working, was actually unhappy money? And if so, what did you do to turn that around in your own life to create more happy money? Yes, thank you. Thank you for asking. You know, let me share with you a short story. Mm-hmm. I was approached by a woman uh, at the party, and she said she wanted to take a look at my wallet. And I said, it's okay. Uh, and she took all the bills out from my wallet and start, started checking something. So I got so curious, and I observed what she was doing. And she said, this is good, this is good. This is great. And she returned my wallet back to me and she said, Ken, all your money is good. And I asked her, what is good about my money? She said, Ken, all all of your money is smiling. That means you must have done some great work to receive money. That means you help people uh, become happy. That's happy money. And she said, on the other hand, if you're taking advantage of other people or just doing what you don't like and receive money, your money is crying in your wallet or getting upset or angry. And I really uh, got it. It's interesting. I don't see if my money is smiling or not, but I can imagine some of my friends' money is smiling. Some of my you know, uh, other friends must be angry because he's kind of like you know, sketchy guy. So <laughs> I realized that uh, there are two kinds of money. So after that, I try to do the things that a money would smile. And I'd smile too. So uh, I've, I've done businesses and everything I do 
has a money return policy. Uh, so uh, whatever I do, example, I uh, last weekend I did a lecture for 2,000 people. And some people get, get cold or their kids get cold. So my uh, staff follow up and, and we do the refund for the people who, who didn't show up. So that's happy money. And of course, uh, that shocks people. Like, really? You know, and when I miss a concert, I don't get a refund. You know? so, but since they didn't show up, you know, they, uh, I, I don't feel right that, uh, that I receive money from them. So my business is done with that kind of code. So everybody, so all the money I receive is happy money. So, and when I spend it, I make sure that the money I spend will also make somebody happy along the way. And I hope that uh, the money I spend will bring back more friends and come back to me. So that's when I say, arigato in, arigato out. When money comes in, I say, arigato, thank you for coming in. And when money leaves my life, also say, thank you, see you soon, come back with your friends. <laughs> so that's the attitude in a happy money. That's amazing. That is such a unique practice. I, uh -huh. I don't know anybody outside of you who does uh -huh. that, who has a workshop <laughs> and people have paid in advance, they've committed their coming, you've appropriated a seat, and maybe materials for them for uh -huh. the weekend, and uh -huh. they don't show and you say, this is okay. Here's your money back. How many of those people actually that you pay back who don't show end up coming back to your workshop? I don't uh, keep records, but uh, I get showers of compliments, thank you notes, and they, of course, they talk about uh, me uh, to their friends, and they, uh, you know, we're not doing so much because if they didn't show up, we didn't get the money anyway. So uh, there's no minus, uh, you know, for us. Uh, it's just they didn't show up. That means we take it as they didn't sign up. Uh, but, you know, we have so many people in our seminar, you know, we're financially abundant, uh, financially independent. So I don't need um, money financially uh, from the people that they're, uh, that, that we should not accept money that we don't deserve. I think there's something very important in what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are abundant thoughts and lack thoughts. Mm -hmm. And when you know you're gonna be okay, and you, I love this arigato out, arigato in, when you have uh -huh. that sense of the flow, there's a lot of abundance there. When you have another sense of, oh, they don't show, I, I need to take their money. I need to pay myself. There's mm -hmm. a lack thought going on there. And it seems yes. to me that that also creates, invites in, receives, or disallows money. Yes, yes, uh, I agree with you. So, uh, you know, I've been sort of this way even before I achieved financial independence uh, in my 20s. You know, I, I always um, uh, love giving, sharing what I, what I have, what I, what I know. So, um, the reason why I'm doing this is, is to, to see people smile. You know, I, I've sold almost 8 million copies and just calculate how much I made. So I, I was already financially well off be, before I even started, you know. So I'm okay without charging people. So sometimes, once in a while, I do events that everything is so free. So uh, financially challenged people can come. And, and that's my... Um, I and also my staff members have so much fun and joy when we share a free event. Because those are the people that I want uh, my knowledge to be used. So you're like the Oprah Winfrey, right? You get a workshop awesome. and you get a workshop and you get a workshop. Yes, I'm, I'm enjoying so much. But I was uh, um, a happy camper in a small island called Japan, in the size of California. Uh, you know, I, I was busy raising child and writing books and doing seminars, but my daughter turned 21 uh, a few months ago, so I'm, le I'm, I'm a, like a laid off daddy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Empty so, nester, as they say. I know, I know. So my wife and I decided that we're going to do something more fun and more unique, and I, we came up with the idea that I go uh, more work outside of Japan. Mm. So that's why I'm doing this. And this is so much fun. 
I don't feel like the whole thing, book writing, promotion is work. You know, this is my, my new uh, um, adventure. Does that mean that you're going to be bringing these particular workshops to the United States? Yes, and I can do that online too. And uh, my books are uh, um, being, being published in China, Europe, India and all over the world, uh, 45 countries. So um, as you interviewed uh, Dr. John DiMartini, yeah. who's my mentor and a great friend, uh, I want to sort of travel like him. Uh, I, not, I don't know, uh, 29 years or 39 years, uh, but at least for a year or two, I just want to you know, do what he does. It sounds like fun. He really inspires me. Yes, absolutely agreed. I think it's... It, it suits his mission, right? To reach mm -hmm. that many people, to teach the world. So he yes. has a yacht called The World, which he owns and travels the world teaching. And this is the very thing he does. He's very aligned with his yes. values and his yes. mission. It's inspiring. He's my hero, yes. And he's so fun. And a lot of Japanese people uh, love him. Uh, he's coming actually to Japan in, in, in a couple of weeks. Mm. We're very excited. Well, then now I need to say, because he already told me to say hello to you and you're bringing him in. So I'm going to ask That's that right. he say hello to Dr. Martini when he's with me yes. in Japan. Yes, now yes. We'll have fun, yes. Have the loop there. Uh -huh. You know, can you talk about, I, I found something very, very important in your book. I saw, I had an insight in your book. So I'm hoping we can delve just a wee bit into money personality types. Mm-hmm. And you talk about seven of them distinctively, mm -hmm. plus there's combo platters. So yes, that, that, if, there's a lot more. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. folks, you know, if you want to read the money personalities, you can get his book, mm -hmm. Happy Money. Will you just share one or a couple of them so we have a sense, maybe people can identify who they are sure. and how they're operating right now? Uh-huh. I think anybody can identify uh, some of the money types. Uh, as I was doing an accounting job, I realized that some people uh, spend so much money and some people don't spend money. And, uh, I, and I found out they're uh, what they call, uh, what I call spender. You know, they love spending, they, they love shopping. And there are those who, who love saving. And uh, the, the funny thing is uh, uh, they get married. No, I do a, a, a money counseling uh, a lot, uh, uh, not as much anymore, but I used to do a lot. So mm -hmm. somehow the spender gets married to a saver, oh. you know, which is so interesting. Uh, or a uh, um, spender marries to a compulsive moneymaker, you know, the uh, uh, entrepreneurs who make a lot of money. Somehow they end up getting married with a partner who loves spending. <laughs> so I mean, it's, in, it's interesting, you know. Uh, uh, because spender loves spending, go go, go uh, to an expensive resort, or buy expensive brand, and the money maker or saver, you know, they're interested in making money or saving money. They're not interested in say say uh, uh, spending, so that's why they fight. Mm. So um, uh, before getting married, they are attracted to one another because the spender thinks, oh, you know, I can spend more <laughs> and. Uh, uh, moneymaker type says, wow, she's gorgeous or he's gorgeous because he knows how to have fun or she knows how to have fun. So we are so many different money, uh, money types or the combination of money types. And I, I'm sure you can come up with a few friends' names or faces. What I really loved is the idea, you said that a compulsive spender generally comes from an upbringing of compulsive savers and I was yes. ouch. I uh, when you describe it, I wouldn't say I have to have the top brands and the most luxurious resort, although I love these things. Love. <laughs> so there's also a saver in me, but I would say to identify without a doubt, I am a spender. Mm. And when I read that in your book, it was uh such an aha moment because I really <laughs> came from a mom who's cut out coupons yes and, you know shopped at a particular store always to you know save a buck and and i i still have a reaction to that when somebody is so deeply into like um, i know it's a little bit miserly yeah. it's a big turn yeah. off to me 
Mm-hmm. Yes, you want to just slap slap in in the face and you know spend more money and enjoy <laughs> life, right? Have fun, yeah. Yes. Enjoy a yes. little. So, yeah, and I think uh, I'm sure they want to do the same to you. <laughs> Save more money. <laughs> Be stable. Your future. So, you know, there's a war among among us all mm. because savers think that the spender, um, you know, uh, destroy the environment and the world. Consumerism. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, and it's what, what's interesting is uh, mm-hmm. if you have siblings, more than two, even if you're brought up in the same household, your money type could be completely different. Your sister could be a spender or a saver, and you, you, you hate each other because you, you have a money different type. Wow. That's true. My brother is different than I am, without right? a doubt. Wow. Uh-huh. And some, some, some people are very good at uh, making money, and some are better at spending money. So that's when they fight when their uh, uh, wealthy parents die because a spender needs their parents' money and the compulsive uh, uh, moneymaker, they want more money so they can make more money. So there is always fight. So I've done a lot of family therapy, you know, uh, healing the trauma. Uh, and what's interesting is that these dramas ha- keep happening a uh, few generations. So the reason why you're so scared and you cannot get out of this corporate environment could be a money fear that your grandparents or grand grandparents yeah. had when during the uh, depression time. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't even know the names of your grandparents or grand grandparents, but that still the scare in them that they have to hold on to the money, they have to hold on to the stable jobs are passed down to the generation through your grandparents, through your parents, and through to you. So, uh, you know, I realized uh, through counseling for uh, your uh, career, I realized that uh, we are given so much fear, frustration, uh, this desperation around money, and and guilt and shame, all packaged from our our uh, ancestors, which is amazing. I was having a response because I'm Jewish and it's very interesting. You know, I've seen documentaries that went very back to the inception of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And what was fascinating to me was the, the plight or the ongoing pattern that gets repeated over and over and over again where a people, the Jewish people, were invited to come live in a country. And they would go and settle and populate and start to thrive and do well. And for whatever reason, politically or otherwise, they didn't suddenly like that they were doing well. And they would say terrible things about the Jewish people and they're the devil and they're this and that and we have to get rid of them or erase them from the country and seeing what was about to ensue, the Jewish people would grab whatever they could, have to leave much of their money behind and race, God knows how they did this without planes, but somehow through ships and other means to another country where again, they were told you're safe and they'd settle down and they start to relax a little and start to proliferate when again, there was an uprising and people would turn on them. I I mean, this has been going on for thousands of years. So when I'm hearing you say this, I find it fascinating. And I understand the the connection with lineage, but this is so powerful when it comes to money, because if you know, no matter if I build up my little empire, it's going to be taken from me because I'm going to have to flee. I will be to keep, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's so deep inside that, you know, whatever I do will be mm-hmm. taken away, so I might as well spend it and enjoy it. You know, that could be a, a buried underneath. Wow. Yeah, so we do, uh, I do a lot of uh, family uh, therapy, you know, going back uh, at least three generations. Because, you know, it's so interesting. You don't get it, you know, uh, if you if you just focus on, uh, how much you make, how much you save, or how much you invest. It, it's it's way, way, way deeper 
than uh, what you see on your bank account or a spreadsheet. Because it's a despair that your parents or grandparents that you, it, that you don't even know the faces and names, uh, it, the psychic, uh, you know, psychologically it's buried in you. So unless you, you heal the pain and wounds that they carried and your parents carried and you carry, mm. uh, you cannot really be free from money. And that's what I teach to Ooh. the, you know, um, the happy money is just a, just a scratching the surface and it goes down a deeper and deeper and deeper. And that way you can free yourself. And I think you can free all your parents, grandparents and grand grandparents. And then you feel that you're backed up, you're supported by all those uh, great ancestors um, mm. support you um, psychically. That's, that's what I believe. This freedom from money, this is a powerful thing to say. So when you say freedom, is there a level of detachment in there with money? What does that look like, freedom from money? Uh, to, to me, it's like air. You know, uh, money is like water. And as uh, my, my mentor and friend Lynn Twist said, mm. um, money is water that flows, right? And uh, when it flows, it's beautiful. But for, for a lot of people, especially people who have issues with money, Money is icy, cold. Um, it's 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 a cube, you know. When you hold it, it it's 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 so cold, it's freezing. It it could damage your fingers if you keep holding the ice. And if the uh, uh, money is uh, water, and if it flows right, it's beautiful. But if there's little water, it's a drought. If it's too much water, it's flood. I've seen a lot of my family uh, friends who are washed out by the flood of money because they are very wealthy. Mm. And if you don't have money, it's a drought situation. And for financially happily free people, money it evaporates. So it's almost like in the air. When you spend it, when you, when, you, when you make money, you don't care. Like I don't care how much I make or how, how much I spend because I'm the flow of very, very happy money. I have so much money in the bank and uh, I can spend so much, I can give so much. But I don't really care how much I make or how much I, I spend a month because it flows like, um, like it, it's like air. You know, you don't have to be conscious about what's going on. If the money is water, uh, you really have to see, you know, what, how much uh, water come in, how much water come out. But if it's air, you can breathe as much as you want. You can breathe out as much as you want. You can relax and you don't have to complain your you're the person right next to you. Don't breathe more air from me. <laughs> so you can be more relaxed about uh, money. So mm -hmm. ideally, I hope everybody breathes uh, air. You know, so if, if people can deal with money like that, I think we'll be free of war, frustration, mm -hmm. uh, fights. And that's why I wrote my book, Happy Money. Beautiful. This is Dare to Dream, where I feature very successful, masterful leaders who have created major goals. What would you do if you could not fail? If you're here at Dare to Dream, it's to support you to create your dreams into your reality. As Ken was saying, this is what creates happiness, when we do what we truly love, and we actually make a living doing it. I wanna support you to be that and do that. If you would like to be part of the Dare to Dream podcast, you can go to patreon.com slash dare to dream the show will always be free to you and for the price of a dollar a cup of coffee or more you can donate to the show to help it be fully sustainable with all the amazing things we're engaging in and the far reach that we have so in order to support the show please go to patreon.com slash dare to dream and donate and thank you so much in advance and for those of you just tuning in, this is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream, and I'm speaking with Ken Honda, author of the best-selling book, Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. Where do you, Ken, recommend that people start? So they're listening to this conversation, and ting, 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 little things are dinging inside of them, and they're having some recognition. So if somebody says, I, I would, besides getting your book, which I highly recommend, it's a great read, 
what can they do right now to start to take a look at or shift what's going on? So uh, the first step would be to observe what's going on in your life um, emotionally around money. You know, do you feel frustration? Do you feel shame, guilt when you receive money? Which most of us do. Um, just check out why guilt, why shame, why embarrassment, you know, around money. So when you just take a look at what's going on, you feel shameful because you're not making enough money to make uh, your family happy. But that's not really your fault. You just happen to fall into the situation and you can get out of the hole. Uh, but unless you deal with this shame and guilt, uh, you just pass it on to your kids. Instead of saying, hi, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry as, as your father, I cannot make, I, I don't have enough money to support you. So yeah. could you, would you be okay without going to a, a piano lessons or something? You know, your kids would understand. But instead, you, you're frustrated and you're yelling, yelling, yelling at your kids. Like, you don't, you know, just keep going to classes. So I'm not paying, you know. So it's almost like you're making uh, kids fall. So instead of just um, uh, throwing uh, uh, blame, shame, and guilt at some other people, you have to own it. You know, when you feel embarrassment, shame, guilt, uh, over joy, you have to own it. And, and then just, just see how it goes. And talk about money uh, and emotions with your partners, families, and friends. Uh, I, the, the biggest joy I have in my life is all the family of four or five, they all hug each other and cry about money because we all share the guilt and shame and you know um, happiness around money. Mm -hmm. So that would be the first thing to observe what's going on. And the second, if you could start appreciating money. Mm -hmm. When money comes in, when you receive a check, say, thank you, arigato or danke, or whatever the language, uh, shalom, or whatever the language you have. And then when you spend money, also try arigato out. No. I thank, thank the money for staying with me, even though it was a short visit. <laughs> I really enjoyed having you. And so uh, that way you start uh, transforming your relationship with money. Mm -hmm. And once you're not scared of money, you don't feel guilt about money, uh, somehow it uh, more money comes into you. What you appreciate, appreciates. So if you let the flow of money in a more happy, gentle way, you, um, you get out this relationship of a love and hate relationship. Because as much as we, we hate money, we love money. So it's almost like money come in and at the same time, don't come. So like money would be confused if it's a person. Like, do you want, do I want to be, do you want me to be with you? or not so but we had that all of us are so confused about money so if you just um re, uh, solve the mystery of what, what what was happening in when you were a child i'm sure your parents uh didn't do a uh, deal with money right and they didn't probably teach you right and nobody really it's all uh it's about sex you know nobody really taught you about the most important thing because everybody is so embarrassed and, and shameful. For example, in North America, I, I found out that uh, people don't talk about money, how much money you make or how much money you have. It's almost like a taboo, right, for asking. 100%, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we're more casual about money. You know, uh, we ask our friends, like, how much you make? Oh, really? You know, I'm jealous. So we're more open about that. But sex? Forget it. Right. Japanese people are, you know, freak, freaked out about uh, 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 sexual issues. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 inter interesting culturally. But wherever I go, uh, people get really frozen up when when they talk about money. So they feel tense or uh, upset or uh, suddenly looks. Uh, they look very worried. One of the places I see entrepreneurs, especially, get very tense around money conversations is when they're having a conversation with a potential client and the mm -hmm. client says to them, great, I understand what your services are. What do you charge? And there's mm -hmm. this, I know because I have a lot of these people come to me as clients and say, 
I don't know what to say. Because if I say <laughs> this number, maybe it's so high they're going to go with somebody else. If I say that yes. number, I'm lowballing myself. And just even trying to understand what my own value is mm -hmm. and asking for it and believing that I'm going to receive it as well. Um, and what do you do with that situation? How might people yes. navigate asking <laughs> for the money yes. they deserve? <laughs> That's uh, that's one of my favorite questions, you know, that uh, I get often asked. Maybe one of the most mostly asked questions about when can I raise my, you know, fee or how can I raise more? It's universal. I get the same questions in China, Japan, and Europe, and U.S. So to answer it shortly, um, uh, what you charge will attract certain uh, clients. If you charge, if you're a massage therapist, if you charge ten dollars. You attract that kind of crowd. If you charge fifty dollars, you you attract that kind of crowd. If you charge a hundred dollars, that will uh, attract a different crowd. So you have to choose um, who you want to work with to begin with. That because is you know, very interesting. I've never heard that yeah, before. Yeah, people uh, come. Uh, if you are just a uh, client side, you just the turn around turned around the table. And uh, if you want a massage, uh, and if, if you are used to a $50 massage session, $10 is cheap. Are you happy? Wow, $10 massage? You probably think, no, he or she is not good. <laughs> right? Yeah. And if it's a $200 massage, ooh, too much, I can't afford it. So people go to a massage therapist depending on your um, you know past experiences and uh, your budget so what is interesting is it's the same with lawyers accountants uh, coaches uh, what you charge will, will decide who you are going to attract so you have to be very careful what, what you do with prices and so and a lot of people ask me so what I'm curious about is abundance beliefs. And I understand from reading your books that there are abundance beliefs that create even more abundance, but there are also very limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. What are some of the limiting beliefs that people might be living with, but maybe they're not aware of? So we often uh, get boxed in when we think there is not enough. No, that gives you a choking feeling like oh, I can't breathe, you know. So when you realize that uh, you, there may be a roof, uh, roof above your head yes. and uh, running water, uh -huh. and, uh, if it's a, if, especially if it's hot water, mm -hmm. you're luckiest one on the planet, you know, luckiest uh, probably 10, 20 person, uh, mm -hmm. percent uh, on this planet. And if you have more than three or four clothes, you're also great. Even though if it's not not the high brand or the you know the newest brand, if you have more than four sweaters or a sweat or uh, aloha, you're in heaven. But since we are in comparison, we we are forced to believe that we need more. We have to buy more. We deserve more. So unless we are stuck in this, or we, unless we get out of this uh, scarcity mentality, we feel like there's not enough. But think about survival. You know, for survival, we have more than enough mm. in terms of, you know, uh, clothes. And these days, you know, we have more than enough nutrition in our body. Maybe, you know, we can, we, we can eat ourselves off for years, you know. So we have so much already in, in our system. So once you know that probably we should, we should worry about letting go more letting go of our clothes letting go of our fat in our body system you know uh instead of feeling like we need more we you can think like we we could be happier with less and that's why we're getting heavier and heavier because we're so afraid you know when we're afraid we eat more and then you know we try to store uh, in our body so that's why financially a more financially challenged people are bigger than the you know wealthy people and what about somebody who's got a really particular dream i'm thinking about somebody 
very specific in regards to what you're saying. And this person has a dream of world travel. They have not traveled nearly enough, and yet they haven't created it. I know their money isn't where they dreamed it would be, mm -hmm. but I see them doing what you're talking about, which is there is a certain level of consumerism happening. And even though there's a little bit, it's, it's a client of mine, so I'm just keeping a little vague, mm -hmm. but they, they mm -hmm. do some savings without a doubt. However, the glaring neon sign is constantly every year, world travel, world travel, but it's not created. World travel, world travel, but it's not created. What can be done there to bridge that gap so that, I mean, first of all, what's askew? What's really going on? Right? And second of all, what can be done so that they can actually step into an align and say, arigato, travel, <laughs> world mm -hmm. travel. Yeah. So I was asked the exact, this exact same question uh, about eight or nine years ago yeah. uh, in a you know, huge auditorium. I, I think we got about 2,000 people. And the, the person who asked the question was a 20-year-old college student. Mm. And he said, I have no money, but I want to see the world. And people laughed because it's so naive, right? <laughs> and uh, I, I asked him, do you know how much it would cost to travel the world? He said, no idea, but I want to, I want to see the world. Mm -hmm. And everybody laughed. So um, do you have any plans? He said, no plan, no money. And everybody laughed. That's what we are, right? And I, I, I suggested, uh, why don't you ask a sponsor for fifty dollars a month? So send me to the world campaign. You know, ask your uncle, ask your neighbor, ask whoever uh, your friends, and then uh, if you come up with uh, uh, sixty, seventy, uh, ideally hundred people, and if you if you have like uh, thirty people, forty people, uh, depend on depending on where you go. If, it, if, you, if you get 30 people, you can go to uh, a poor country, you know, with that it costs only like $5 a night. And if you just uh, get 100 people, maybe you can travel Europe, US, or, you know, fancy area. And uh, a few months later, I kind of forgot about what I, what I gave him. Uh, and then he showed up in the same, uh, you know, place. And then he's, he raised a question. And then I said, oh, you. And he, he said, Ken, I'm so excited. I'm here to thank you because I got like 70 people uh, who, who placed to support me. So I'm going to the world next month. Like, like everybody clapped their hands. And then what I was so super amazed is that uh, after that guy, uh, hundreds of students started doing the same way and then went off the world which is so amazing. And uh, a few years later, a uh, middle-aged woman, she was in 40s or 50s, uh, she also asked me the same question. I heard from you, Ken, a lot of college kids or young people are being supported, but what about me? You know, I'm, not, I'm not young, I'm not attractive, I'm single. And he said, but you know, do you think a single person deserves uh, world travel? And she said, "Yes, why not?" And everybody just you know laughed and just give her give her uh, uh, a round of applause. And then she did the same thing. And then after that, middle aged, unattractive, what they call themselves, uh, single guys and, and and women, they started traveling again. So there are so many creative ways to do. And I can write a book on, you know, um, travel yes, the world please. without a penny. Some, you know, uh, uh, some of the photographers I heard from a friend of mine that they had a contract to give them uh, uh, pictures all over the world. So they tied up with an airline company and then um, they, they started reporting. They're a young, young couple. And then uh, for, um, in exchange for the articles and photos, mm -hmm. they get the free uh, air travel and uh, plane tickets and uh, uh, four or five star hotels. You know, you can get a deal like that, but that's kind of unusual. But you know, if you are creative, there's millions of ways to do that. And the, the, the tragedy is that we cannot do that because of money. 
And it's not true. Mm. Powerful. I have a dear friend, Devin, who created a travel magazine. And he has said the very thing that you just said. He's told mm -hmm. me that as somebody who owns this magazine, he basically travels everywhere for free. And mm -hmm. he has the most adorable situation. He's been married to his wife and they travel together to all these countries and they get married in every single country. So now it's a thing. <laughs> People are following yeah. them online and the hotels uh -huh. can't wait to even pay for their wedding for free. Yes, the that's great. For free, right? Somebody in the country says, oh, well, you're going to have to dress in the garb of our country. Here you go. <laughs> their food, their photos, everything's really taken care of, their excursions. So and that's very out of the box. And I've never sat down and had that conversation with them, but Devin has alluded to me, you know, Deb, just by virtue of the fact that you do this podcast at the level you do, you probably could find a way to parlay that and use that for travel and go around yeah. the world. And I think that's a really interesting point of view. I wouldn't have considered, I love doing this. So to uh -huh. do this anywhere, as long as there's good connection and Wi-Fi, it could absolutely yeah. Yeah, you can come to Tokyo and do a joint podcast with me. I have a, a fairly big a podcast program here, too. We've hit uh, 40 million downloads, and a lot of people listen to this. You know, So come and do that from Tokyo. That would be uh, an option, too. Thank you so much for saying that, because when you say that, what I hear is that's manifestation. Yes. And it, it things happen so organically. If, and the, the most important thing is know who. You know, if you're connected with the right right people, mm. things boom happen in two seconds. So I think yeah. meeting the right people and having the right friends is a key. You know, is a door to your new world. So don't get don't throw away your dreams. You know, if it's you said a uh, neon sign is flashing, <laughs> yeah, go do it. Yeah, money will follow you. Money will follow you. And you are a family man. And there are beautiful uh -huh. pictures of you and your family. And I know that you have a really special relationship with your daughter. So mm -hmm. tell me, what do you feel as a dad who loves money, is happy with money, has peace with money, and no attachment to money? What is it that you found very important to impart to your children? So I always uh, taught my daughter to follow her heart, uh, which is a uh, music for her. So she's probably going to a music career on her own. And I strongly uh, uh, support her uh, for doing that. And, and so there are so many ways to support yourself, you know, as a musician, writer, and uh, so many other occupations. When I started writing, uh, I, I, I had at least a hundred friends who said, you cannot make a living as a writer, you know? And then of course, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't becoming a professional writer um, as a vacation, but something in me really got upset, you know? Okay, I'm gonna prove I can make enough money so I can, you know, at least uh, uh, make it as a profession. So that's why I got serious about writing. And, and this uh, occupation is so hard, you know, only like a hundred or a few hundred people can make a living, you know, probably anywhere in the world in, in each language. And, and I did that. So I, I uh, share these techniques or the, the things with my daughter mm -hmm. and I'm one of the examples who followed um, his heart and then make it a reality. So um, I'm sort of like showing with my life that, uh, life could be fun and beautiful. What's your secret around that? That's very interesting because one of the many things I do out in the world is coach people how to write a book. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I'm curious and I agree with your statistics there. I feel mm -hmm. that being an author can open many, many rich doors for people to incredible yes. opportunities, not uh -huh. always necessarily financially. So the fact that you were able to figure that out, I find fascinating. So when you yes. make that decision, and I love that, that in the face of people saying, no, this can't happen, you're like, really? Watch me, <laughs> this is gonna happen, and good for you. What are some of the secrets of what you did in order to make this a prosperous career to be an author? You know, first of all, I set my mind that I was gonna 
published uh, 10 million books in my life. And, and uh, everybody laughed at me like, oh, wow, you know, you'll be lucky if you just publish one book. <laughs> and uh, that's like almost uh, 20 years ago. And, uh, and I started doing uh, research like Dr. Uh, John Martini. You know, I did intensive research uh, and I met all the best-selling authors and I asked them about the keys to, uh, to writing uh, great books. And I just figured if you write this way or that way, if you do this promotion right, you know, your books would sell. So that's why I have published about 140 books or so. Uh, my original books is about 54 or five, somewhere around that, and sold almost 8 million copies. So I really got the keys to unlock uh, what, it, what needs to be successful as a writer, which I teach and write another book. You know, I, I wrote a few books on how to be a, a successful author. But, yeah. uh, you know, so follow your heart is the key. Open your message. Uh, open and share, share your heart. Uh, because uh, if enough people, I, I say 10,000 people are interested in what you have to say you can stay as a professional writer. And if you can uh, make the number to 100,000 people, um, you know, you'll do fairly well. And if you uh, do that with million people, you become a millionaire. So um, it, it's, uh, it depends on how many people you can touch. So if you have a big heart and uh, let a million people in your heart, you know, with your love, uh, uh, one million people will love you by, by your books. So beautiful. I'm speaking with Ken Honda. He is Japan's number one best-selling personal development guru, and he teaches you how to achieve peace of mind when it comes to money. If you want to learn more, go to KenHonda.com. I'm curious, Ken, I believe that you are compared to Marie Kondo, the Japanese yes. organizing consultant and author. Mm -hmm. How does that feel to be compared to her? And have you had the chance to meet her? Uh, I have so many mutual friends, so it's, it's, it's kind of even strange uh, that we haven't uh, met each other. Huh. Uh, we publish from the same publishing house in Japan. So uh, I really feel honored uh, that uh, she's doing great and also uh, people compare with me. So I think uh, probably we share something in common, appreciation. When she teaches about uh, cleaning up the house, she just, she says, you know, thank the, the thing that you're throwing away, right? And it's just the same thing. Appreciation is a key. Mm -hmm. So I feel uh, so honored and validated that uh, appreciating life uh, is valued more internationally. And I, I think it's a core of Japanese culture, respecting each other, appreciating one another, appreciating all the details that people won't notice. Mm, that's beautiful. I believe that I have a new practice starting tomorrow. So I'm extremely disciplined with my bills. I have them in one place and they're in date order, how they're due. <laughs> yes, so every Friday I open that package and then I pick out whatever is due from that date till the next Friday. And I pull that out and that's when I pay, right? And everything else sits there because it's not, not due yet. I'm going to write a big, beautiful note that says, thank you. And I'm going to put it on top of my bills to remind me every single time I do that. Really, it's a ritual. On Friday, I'm going to take time to thank energetically for everything it's given me already in advance that I've been enjoying mm -hmm. and send out beautiful. payments with that. Thank you. And see how your financial situation changes because it will change. And I've witnessed hundreds of thousands of people. I got so many testimonials on my website that their life, financial life has shifted so much. And what's great about it is it doesn't cost anything, you know, just appreciation. Appreciation doesn't cost anything. So just, you know, have fun, do that. That's so true. Appreciation is free and it creates so much more so many other good things. And I think it was Lynn Twist who said appreciation, appreciation appreciates. So it's true. It's like a 401k plan or an ROI mm -hmm. as you appreciate the return on your investment goes up. So that's good for you in every way. And Ken, this is Dare to Dream. So what do you next dare to dream? 
What are your future dreams and goals? As I said, Dr. John DiMartini is my hero. And I love to travel like him. And I, I, I love to uh, uh, teach and talk with people in the world and heal the pain around money and uh, free a lot of people from uh, money. And both financially and emotionally. And I think I'll have so much fun doing that. So I can't wait to go to China, US, Europe, India, Africa to share what I know. That's beautiful. And is there one thing that you do every day, no matter what, it's your ritual, it's your practice that allows you to be who you are, allows you to create the life that you have? Mm -hmm. I always start my day and end my day with appreciation. I start appreciating uh, who I am and, and all the people around surrounding me. I'll definitely appreciate you, Debbie, for uh, having me to show at the end of my day today. And uh, just to feel, wow, what a great honor and how much fun I had in, in, during the day. So I was just falling to sleep in this uh, prayer of appreciation and uh, uh, thankfulness. So I, that's what I do. Well, arigato, Ken, for arigato. sharing your brilliance today on Dare to Dream. It's been such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. I hope to see you soon somewhere, LA yes. or Tokyo. Or Tokyo. That sounds amazing for me. And thank you for that invitation. I shall not forget. And I end today's show with this quote from Ayn Rand. Money is only a tool. It will take you wherever you wish but it will not replace you as the driver. I've got some amazing guests coming on and you'll want to tune in in the next weeks. Lana Nelson's gonna be here. She's a nutritional intuitive. She's incredible. She's gonna be doing readings for you in real time about your body and what foods it likes and which it will not tolerate. She's the author of The Food Codes. As well, David Wood will be here to talk about how to play for real high performance for work and for life. Remember, subscribe to the show and keep going after your dreams. Allow them to be created and courage is all it takes to begin in the first place. I, I really uh, bless all the great things happen to your life. Thank you. That's very kind. I feel the same. This is really a pleasure. It was, it was meant to Thank be. You. It took them six months to get us together, but it was meant to be. <laughs> That's right. So how, say, please say hello to your friends. Um, that I'm, I'm, I was so happy with you. Oh, I will. Thank you. Okay. All right, Ken. Okay, so, yes. All right. See you soon. Yes, we will. And I will send you copies yeah. of this when it goes out. Thank you so much. Have, Have a, a beautiful day. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Bye right now. Bye.